All right, to be honest, I haven't seen this much hype around a new act since uh, maybe Ice Spice. This kid's going crazy viral. Everyone loves him. Let's get into this story. Before BLP Kosher would become the most promising Jewish rap star on the planet thanks to his attention-grabbing sense of style and off-the-wall lyrics that contain plenty of references to his faith. Well, he was born Deerfield Beach in the South Florida region of good old Broward County. Now, having just recently broken into the hip-hop scene during the past couple of years, well, Kosher has kept a few details to himself, like his birthday and his government name. Though I did do a little digging, and I'm pretty sure his real name, it's actually Benny Landy Pavlin. Now, when Kosher was a young kid, he grew up watching things unfold on the Florida streets that he knew could spell danger for himself if he wasn't careful. In fact, he told Complex... I know that anything can be taken away from you in a second, even little stuff like getting into an altercation on the bus or on the side of the road. In certain areas, there are people that don't have anything to lose. Now that's how one of the first lessons Kosher ever learned became pride and something that can get you killed. So checking his ego at the door while he looked to get involved in something that would keep him out of trouble and at the age of seven while he fell in love with skateboarding. Now, once he was a little bit older, well, Kosher began recording tricks in skate parks with his friends and donning skate shop fashion wear. But the most important thing skating instilled in Kosher was a willingness to never give up no matter how many times he might fail while trying to learn like a new trick. Now, this became a lesson he'd carry forward with him everywhere he went. I was like, I had like a little skate shop sponsor going through flow and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a hustle, like, you know what I mean? Just like going in the streets with my, with my with the camera, like ask my friend to film it, go home, like pay my dog to edit and shit. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like very similar to rap. Like you could use that like work ethic in the stew in a way too and shit. Yeah. Now when he wasn't at the skate park, well, Kosher spent time praying and searching for little signs from God. Now growing up in a family of Jewish faith, well, Kosher was never exactly orthodox and didn't observe Shabbat. But the, the culture of his people, it still resonated with him. Take his hair, for example. Also, underneath that, uh, that thing, maybe there's a yarmulke. I don't know. Now, Kosher's now signature hairstyle had arrived about three years ago. Now, at the time, he was skating with a close personal friend named Charmaine, a man whose girlfriend had just recently passed away. Now, Kosher, he wanted to help his friend out, so he said a special Jewish prayer to elevate her soul to heaven. Moved by his friend's gesture, will Charmaine, he returned the favor by using a crochet hook to turn the two traditional payout curls Kosher already had on the sides of his head into two small wicks, a popular hairstyle which is in South Florida. Now, it wasn't Kosher's usual look, but he embraced it anyway, and uh, well, it would pay off for him later by becoming his signature look. Boy, Charmaine, his name was Jeffrey. He had the star David tatted on him too, just like Bro, you. It was like a gift. Like he was like, you only want two? I was like, yeah, just, just these little ones. And he's like, that's hard. Now during this period of time, well, Kosher was still spending most of his days at the skate park and getting into trouble. Now he liked rapping, but only as a hobby. And he listened to artists like Kodak Black, XXX, Glock 9, Bankroll Fresh, Lil Wayne, as well as Eminem. Then in 2021, while Kosher started dabbling in music himself alongside his boy Legary, producing his first track ever, a song titled Sweet Potato. But it would be another year at least before he began to gain any meaningful traction. Now throughout 2022, while Kosher was living with his mom and his grandma out of a senior living retirement center that he had to sneak in and out of while holding over 14 jobs at places like the Cheesecake Factory and UPS, only to get fired from nearly all of them. Then he started working for Uber Eats three months later, while his life would change forever when he met a man by the name of Jew Shiesty. BLP Kosher's rap career, it really took on a life of its own when he met fellow rapper Jew Shiesty, a man who immediately embraced him as one of his own and invited him to the studio to collaborate. On nothing more than a whim, while well, these two created a rap song titled Beatbox and then posted it to SoundCloud in just the one day. Now at the time, Kosher, he was just coming along for the ride, but Shiesty saw something special for Kosher during the process and convinced him to take rap more seriously. Now these two, they did more than just collaborate with one another, they named each other as well. Now originally, Kosher, he was going by the handle of BLP, then he started thinking about calling himself Le Kosher. But his buddy, he told him to put those names together as BLP Kosher. And while Shiesty was originally going to use the name of Young Dreidel, well, Kosher landed on Jew Shiesty, convincing him, his friend, it was the perfect moniker for their brand. Juice, I, I gave Jew Shiesty his name, Mike Cook Burst, you know, 
I met him at a skate shop. He basically was like a Jewish rapper. He he should have been he could have been competitive with me and been like, nah, I'm the Jew like that raps mm -hmm. and shit. He could have been real competitive. Then before long, well, these two they started going viral together. Sure, Kosher's hair had helped, but no one could dispute that the kid he could also rap. Now, peppering his songs with double entendres, deep cut pop culture references, and some funny lyrics, well, the kid. He was set to go places. But then tragedy struck when Kosher's good friend and the man who gave him his trademark wicks in the first place, well, Charmaine, he was actually shot and killed by the police. Once he had learned about what had happened, well, Kosher promised himself that he would never lose the curls Charmaine gave him. Then Ju Shiesty, well, he passed away as well, and Kosher recognized that he had a responsibility to fully commit himself to music in order to turn up for the friends who had helped him find his way. Now, throwing himself into music, while well, BLP Kosher, he started recording one new song after another, releasing mixtapes on SoundCloud with titles like Earth to Benjamin, Angelfish, and 225 Bars. Now, some of those tracks, they found attention, but it wouldn't be until his 2022 song, Inferno, that Kosher really began to find his voice. Now, from there, he produced songs like The Knack before appearing on comedian Drewski's Instagram Live, only to receive a less than favorable review from the jokester during a freestyle. Now, Drewski might have focused on the inherent comedy in BLP Kosher's music and looks, but that appearance still wound up earning the kid more attention than he'd ever earned before, and a ton of new fans as well. Now, all those same folks, they then eagerly showed up for the release of Kosher's very first full-length mixtape titled BLP Kosher and the Magic Dreidel, featuring his viral hit, Jew at the Canoe. But as much as the year 2022 would prove to be a year of transition for Kosher, 2023 would be his breakout year. So far, 2023 has been a whirlwind of activity for BLP Kosher, highlighted by his breakthrough single, a high-profile collaboration with Baby Tron, aptly titled Maisel Tron. Now, in a sense, it was actually Kosher's fans who manifested this song into reality by continually commenting on Kosher's profile and requesting that he work with Tron. Now, eventually, Tron, he hit Kosher up because he had seen Kosher's name under his own comments as well, and the two got into the DMs. Now, the track, it dropped in early April alongside Lyrical Lemonade music video directed by Cole Bennett. Now, with his face all over TikTok as well, well, Kosher, he had done all that he can to keep the pedal to the metal, lining up live dates while also recording his newest mixtape, Bars Mitzvah. It's bars Mitzvah. Bars Mitzvah. <laughs> I'm trying to give the fans what they want. I want everything to be like what they want. But before that project drops, we'll keep your eyes peeled for further single releases, not to mention an appearance on Lyrical Lemonade's upcoming Summer Smash. Now, Kosher, he might still be somewhat new to this music game, but that isn't going to stop him from working as hard as he can to honor his fallen friends by producing a hit single that goes to the top of the charts worldwide. Now, whether that happens or not, well, that's almost secondary as far as BLP Kosher is concerned. The most important thing he can do right now is make the world a more pleasant place for us all to be in, he told Complex. I don't really got nothing to prove because I know my meaning for it and why I'm doing it. It's really all to make the world a better place in the future. I really want to bring the people that are together, together. Now that's not the usual type of ambition you hear from most rappers, but maybe that's what will set BLP Kosher apart from everyone else in the game. Now, how far will his career take him? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. After all, this has been before they're famous. Now I do have a question for you guys. What's the oddest hairstyle you've ever gotten attention for? I know I've left some gunk in here and I've had this thing turn me into a werewolf. But uh, I've never done anything too crazy. It's always just gone one way. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking the Island Boys. That's about as wild as it gets, right? So I guess we'll tag on to the end of this. Our most recent video from the Island Boys. We do that now. We add a little video at the end. Check that out. Congrats to BLP Kosher on all his success. And I'll see you guys in another video. By now, you've seen these two fellas everywhere having dominated everyone's social media feeds off a simple clip of them singing in a pool, which would clock in over 5 million views over on TikTok. Let's take a look. I'm gonna keep what going. You're gonna keep that gun. I'll be just staring at the sun. Now, these kids might actually have a hit on their hands with a few online calling it the song of the summer. I mean, people, they're actually doing impressions of this song. But then, of course, there are other people who are bashing them in the comments and don't want to see them on their timeline anymore. Now, since going viral, the boys have been featured on both the H3H3 and the BFFs podcast, and it's actually pretty crazy. I haven't seen this type of hype around any face-tattooed rappers, well, since the good old days of Kid Boo and Joker 305. 
Remember him? Then we made a post over on our Instagram app before they were famous that the boys actually shared, and then I got to talking with Kodiak Red in the DMs. Now the boys, they were actually kind enough to send me some updated mug shots to use for our thumbnail, which I'll have to admit was pretty sweet of them. But where did these island boys come from and what do they have planned for the future? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in this video. My name of course is Michael McCredden and if you want me to interview these boys, well we could set that up. I could do like a FaceTime and get more into the nitty gritty. How do you get your hair like this? Like, do, it's, it's, how do you do it? We literally have the tool right in front of us. A uh, crochet needle. Let's get into it. Two bros chilling in the hot tub. I got a real damn topic. I'm like the damn on the topic. Uh -huh. I'm an island boy. I put my vest on, yeah. Fly Soldier and Kodiak Red. Well, they're two twin rappers from Florida. Now, their real names, according to police records, are Alex and Frank Venegas. Now, both were born on July 16, 2001. They hailed from West Palm Beach, Florida, and in the DMs, well, they told me they grew up in a single family home with their mom, and as for their dad, well, he passed away when they were just six years old. Now, the boys, they posted some throwback pics and videos that leads one to assume, well, they grew up in a pretty decent area, and they went to a decent school. I mean, West Palm Beach just sounds like the perfect place to live regardless. Despite how they grew up, well, these two, they quickly turned into troublemakers, sporting house arrest bracelets and the likes to their social media feeds. Big body bands, remember, I used to be Look dusty. Big body bands, remember, I used to be dusty. Big body bands, remember, I used to be dusty. Now, the two were fraternal twins, meaning that they're not identical, but they were born at the same time, and it's still hard to tell them apart. In fact, I think I got them wrong over on Instagram. Now, for starters, let's figure out which one is uh, Alex. Now, he's Fly Soldier with the yellow hair and 17 tattooed his temple. And then there's Frankie, who's Kodiak Red. He's the one who's got the brown and blonde hair with an eagle on his forehead. I heard someone call him out saying it looked like a car logo. It's definitely an eagle. Now, Red, he said in an interview that he got started tattooing at the age of just 12. I think I always see myself with, with just a lot of tattoos. I just always want to tell him, like, to be tatted up, wear it up. Cause I've been around so many tatted people. I'm like, oh, at such a young age, I want to be tatted myself too. Now, if you're curious, like I was, who filmed that interview? Well, it turns out it was this twin. The hand tattoos, I got these at 14. Okay. Yeah. Now talk about your sleeves. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one cause it's easier. Mm -hmm. This is Alex for life, representing my twin, which is you. Fly Soldier also got his tattoos early on in life and he did a Q&A on their shared YouTube channel where he opened up about his time where he was in a juvenile detention center. They're gonna make you fight someone by your size, but that's been there for a while. He's been eating healthy, you know, and he ain't gonna back down. He really gonna get down because there are people that run the model or the case might be telling him that you gotta fight, you feel me? Cause this new kid think he liked that, you feel me? Now in the DMs, the boys, they told me that they've been locked up since they were 13 for robberies and burglaries. And uh, well, they both got sent away for 18 months to different juvenile prisons. What did their antics look like before getting arrested? Well, probably a little something like this. Cause I'm an island boy and I've been trying to make, oh, I'm an island boy. Now there are a ton of different police records on the boys you can easily find online. Now Frank, or Red, well he got charged in 2017 for simple assault, intent threat to do violence, battery, marijuana possession under 20 grams, and drug equipment possession and or use. Then there was a probation violation for child involved in imposed conditions. Now I have actually no idea what that means, but according to famous birthdays, well, Red, he's also got a daughter named Kalia. So I guess it has something to do with that. As for Alex or Fly Soldier on the criminal standpoint, well, he's got two charges for aggravated assault with a firearm. Then he's got another two charges for improper exhibition of a weapon. Now they told me in the DMs that Fly Soldier, well, he got sent to Brooksville, Florida, and Red, well, he got sent to St. John's, which is also in Florida. Now, once the boys got out, well, it appears that they got to work on becoming SoundCloud rappers starting in the year 2020. Now they've released a number of singles and music videos over on their YouTube channel, Big Bag Entertainment, which currently sits at about 21,000 subscribers. And the oldest video on the channel is from March 28th, 2020, titled My Time. Now I've never claimed to be like a tastemaker in music, but I'll actually give these kids some credit. Like I think they could sing. Hi y'all, I'm an island boy, I put my vest on ya. Now I also gotta add it to the boys for pushing through all the hate that they've received with people leaving nasty comments and disliking like all their videos. Now they kept posting songs and videos throughout 2020 and they had mixed levels of success. They collaborated together on Smoke, which almost got 300,000 views. And then they did Rain, which hit nearly 800K. 
Now in this one, well, the boys, they also showed off a bit of their acting skills. What you trying to get? You trying to get that pet, boy? Uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the hey, you got this money? Huh? You got this money? Now, as for the recent success, well, they must have took a trip to LA because they went on the No Jumper podcast, which obviously, well, it gave them a big boost in credibility. Now, only a few days later, well, they dropped their hot tub freestyle of Island Boys, which exploded all over TikTok. Now, the comments, again, they were mainly negative, but the boys, they're enjoying their newfound fame. Their notoriety is like exploded. They've appeared on multiple podcasts since. They're essentially the talk of the town. We're gonna put up pictures of two different things. It's like random stuff, and you guys can sing, you can rap, so you just see what you guys come up with. Uh, I love this. We got Kodak, bananas, and TikTok. Said I'm on TikTok, busy with a Glock. I'm like, boy, you better stop, cause I blow up on this top. Over on Instagram, while well, their followers have surpassed 250K each, and all in all, while researching this video, well, I actually kinda grew to like these kids. I mean, they're going for it on all platforms and island boys. Well, it has something to it that could make these fellas into something more than just a viral meme. So I guess we'll wish them all the best. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!